So that's what we shall be doing today. Intertemporal uh, optimization, consumption smoothing, or uh, an economy which is moving over time, and we are trying to uh, change its uh, movement. So this is known as consumption smoothing, or roughly intertemporal optimization. That's our uh, first item in our toolbox. Uh, and uh, uh, until now, even though we were dealing with uh, growing economies, the, <coughs> the parameters of growth were roughly mainly constant. Exogenous growth is uh, occurring as a result of capital per labor changing over time. That is k dot. That is change in k uh, over time. Or let me write this more uh, properly. dk dt. How does capital labor ratio change with respect to time? That is the whole essence. And uh, in our uh, Solovian exogenous neoclassical uh, model, the only thing that changed capital and became the source of growth was savings and investment. And if you, if you recall, investment per labor was made out of constant saving rate out of output. And investment and savings are uh, identical. Uh, now, uh, in an economy, expectations, past information, future variables, the fact that profit rate changes over time, therefore, the return to capital investment is uh, changing over time. Until now, we have assumed that none of these factors are affecting the saving rate. That is the average propensity to save out of income, and saving rate was taken as given. In the meantime, there are diminishing returns, uh, there are uh, calamities, but we have assumed that S does not change. So what we shall do today is we are going to intertemporally optimize over savings, or the other side of the medallion, consumption. If you know savings, you know consumption, and vice versa. So we are going to choose an optimal path for consumption. The essentials, the essential story that is under the steady state, rate of growth in a neoclassical model is zero, irrespective of whether you have intertemporal optimized or not. Uh, the essence will not change. However, uh, the, uh, the technique will enable us to uh, enjoy the upcoming uh, endogenous growth models. This is our agenda. Does this sound exciting? Yeah, it's a rainy day outside, so there isn't much of an uh, uh, the opportunity cost of being here is uh, quite low uh, today. Uh, this is one of those days. So, uh, <coughs> all right. Now, uh, let's. Uh, <coughs> Let's cook up the, uh, the story. We will work with a representative agent. There are uh, numerous agents, numerous uh, uh, individuals, but we are going to assume that they are all alike. They earn the same thing, they consume the same amount, they save the same amount, uh, uh, their, uh, their income is the same. So we are going to choose any one of them as our representative. All individuals are homogeneous. There is no heterogeneity, meaning that there are no workers versus capitalists. There are no rich and poor. There are no queens and uh, unqueens. Uh, that's, uh, the, uh, that's the whole thing. And uh, there is a big utility function of a dynasty 
that is running from the birth of our time to eternity. This representative guy has a, a utility function which from the birth of time, Anna Domini, zero, Adam and Eve uh, uh, with, uh, with an apple in their hand or uh, uh, the Big Bang, whatever, uh, uh, however you want, to all the way to post infinity, these guys are maximizing a utility function from zero to infinity. So we are not after a utility function that is uh, maximizing uh, preferences over uh, apples and bananas. We are maximizing and uh, infinitely lived uh, over time. You, your children, your grandchildren, their children, so on and so forth, all the way to the uh, doomsday. And uh, in this world, <coughs> even though these guys continue to uh, think in the uh, uh, infinite future, they are still impatient, meaning that uh, consuming today the same thing is more enjoyable than consuming it 10 years later. Then, no, this is not about saving. This is about consuming the same product. You are in your 20s. Uh, uh, driving a Mercedes-Benz at your age does not give uh, the same taste uh, to me uh, in, uh, in my age. Uh, uh, I am more cautious, I am a, or uh, uh, enjoying a party with your friends in your 20s is, yeah, uh, you know what I'm saying. <coughs> so uh, we discount the future at the rate rho. Rho is our subjective discount rate. The higher the rho, the more impatient you are. You are discounting the future. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> uh, let me write this openly. And then this family is growing. And the, high, the bigger the family, the more utility this dynasty enjoys. That's the total preferences, total utility of the uh, dynasty. So uh, the higher the population, the number of offsprings living in one roof, the more uh, is aggregate utility enjoyed by the house. So they are discounting the future by T, and they are uh, <coughs> Uh, <coughs> enjoying more individuals uh, <coughs> over time. So I'm just going to put those T's here, and the integration is over time. Both of them are E, right? Right, right, right. yeah, this is, both, this is also E. Yeah. The natural algorithm. So I am a uh, I dislike postponing consumption at the rate rho. The higher the rho, there is a minus sign here, meaning that today I uh, dislike postponing consumption into higher time intervals. Uh, I don't want the uh, consumption to be uh, postponed. I am impatient, I want to consume it today. But on the other hand, uh, you have to leave something for uh, consumption for the uh, future period as well. So this is not something like hundreds or 100%. Uh, 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 that's uh, immediate consumption is not desirable either. So there is a trade-off. Uh, N is population growth rate. Uh, as you will uh, uh, realize, it will disappear from our system. But for completeness, the ho total household is enjoying utility the more individuals in the household in the future. 
This is our preferences uh, that we want to maximize over time. Utility function discounted at the rate rho and uh, ex uh, uh, accentuated at the rate population uh, n. And uh, there is a budget constraint. Again, two activities, capital ownership and uh, labor ownership. There is no foreign trade. There is no government. There are no uh, 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 financial returns or anything. Uh, <coughs> the budget constraint of the consumer is the guy earns uh, wage rate. And uh, there is an interest rate on asset ownership. Assets are the only things that this individual saves upon. It is like coupons of whatever the product is being produced. And there is an uh, interest uh, earned on previous assets. So wage is labor income. And this is the interest income at the interest rate over assets owned by the individual. Interest income plus labor income, wages. R is the interest rate. A is the assets owned by the household. And that's the only two sources of income. What does the individual do? Well, uh, first of all, uh, all right, consumes. Uh, uh, all right, tamam, J buraya yazalım. The guy consumes and plus decides to earn more or less of assets. That is, I am going to put an A dot here to indicate that uh, <coughs> these assets uh, are either the household is saving, that is increasing its assets combination, or if the wage rate and the interest rate is not enough to meet consumption, then uh, the agent is uh, dissaving, that is using its past assets and changing them into cash and uh, meeting its consumption expenditures. Plus, uh, there is a minus sign. As uh, <coughs> new offsprings, new babies come, you have to worry about their inheritance. The ownership of the house assets are distributed among uh, the, uh, the new uh, uh, born uh, uh, individuals. So per person, the higher the population in the uh, household, the lower is assets per person. So that's why there is a minus an A over here. So what does this budget constraint say? This is subject to your source of income, total income, wages, plus interest earned from previous assets. What do you, what do, you do with your income? We consume and decide whether we should continue to accumulate more assets. Or if your income had not been enough, you decumulate, you sell some of those assets. So this A dot could be positive if saving occurs, negative if previous assets are decumulated, this saving occurs. It could also be zero. You do not, you do not change your asset position. And minus uh, per head, the number of assets are divided with increasing number of babies at the house. Buyurun. Because we either consume or we divide to household. So it's not something like wage. Let me consult my notes. It shouldn't, it, it oughtn't be so. No, say it again. Isn't it positive because we have a bank that we have assets, we either consume it or share with the household or aid that. Uh, Anna, you mean this part, right? Yes. 
Ah, oh, tamam. Doğru. Doğru, doğru, doğru. doğru. Uh, apologies, apologies. True. I'm, I'm writing from the income side. This is income is consumption. You are right. Plus uh, change in assets. This is plus or minus. And this got to be plus. That's correct. correct. Because <clears throat> you are deciding to spend your income. You spend on your income on consumption, and you worry about how you will distribute your existing assets. Thank you. Uh, if I change this to this side, A dot, that is your decision to save or not, it will be clearer, is equal to your income, W plus RA. You spend out of your income minus. And you spent out of your uh, assets as minus. That would be my confusion. Thank you. So this is the, another form of writing the budget constraint, which says that your income minus consumption minus how you spread around your assets among the uh, owners of the house determines whether you will save more or you will dissave, you will spend your, uh, uh, this is the uh, better form of writing. So, the household is maximizing utility, discounted, expanded by the number of individuals, newborn babies, with the constraint or with the decision to take that if income from wages plus uh, interest income or assets, Minus consumption, minus the fact that you have to inherit existing assets among the uh, newborn babies. If this sum is positive, that is, if you have more income than after these decisions, you continue to save. If that decision turns out to be insufficient, then you go back to your uh, existing assets and you decumulate them. And if at a period you are uh, at par, then a dot is zero. <clears throat> this is our uh, framework. Now, uh, this is a simple optimization under a constraint. That's the constraint maximization that you had been solving for uh, a consumer maximizing over uh, utility of two goods, and you have income and you were putting a Lagrangian uh, uh, optimization framework. Do you, you remember all this? Now, Lagrangian framework is under constant setting. Everything happens at the same time. Here we have an uh, intertemporal decision. So we are going to use a Hamiltonian. And since I have a... a Discounted stream, I will use a discounted version of the Hamiltonian. Just like the uh, Lagrangian setup, the general form that we shall be working over and over again, just like the uh, uh, constant optimization framework, is we construct a Hamiltonian equation which is this equation over here, utility function e to rho minus n t, right? I'm just combining these two here, plus a Hamiltonian multiplier that I'm going to use mu rather than a Lagrangian lambda. It doesn't matter. Of the constraint, and my constraint is the uh, change in assets is equal to income minus consumption minus uh, uh, population inheritance uh, of uh, assets. And I will rewrite this simply as W plus RA minus 
Na minus C. Getting rid of A dot. So converting the budget constraint into uh, the dynamic term, this portion entirely fits in, multiplied by a, a Hamiltonian multiplier and uh, with the utility function uh, discounted over time. That's how we will set up uh, the Hamiltonian function. The two first order conditions of this is, first of all, we are trying to maximize, as always, consumption. We take a derivative with respect to C. C is our objective variable. That's what we are maximizing upon. It's the, uh, where the maximum occurs. And this should be equal to zero. Secondly, besides C, another thing that changes is A dot, A, and that is called the cost state variable. It is stating my affairs as a byproduct. Whatever I do changes A dot, and in the next period, it gives me income or uh, I spent uh, some of my income, it is uh, <coughs> called the cost state of affairs. And a derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to the cost state variable, and now that's a trick, is equal to the time derivative of the Hamiltonian multiplier. And that is the only difference with respect to the Lagrangian operator. Minus mu dot is the derivative of the Hamiltonian function with respect to your cost state variable. Typically, it will be capital or it will be uh, assets in our setup. And the maximum reaches uh, a maximum uh, when uh, equated at, uh, the derivative is equated at zero. Have you seen this setup in a in intermediate macro, you should have a macro macro da görmüş olmanız lazım. Uh, well, they are going to play around with it. Uh, so let me just uh, go over it uh, and uh, <coughs> and then uh, third, uh, just to complete the picture, there is a transversality condition that I am going to uh, uh, write. But uh, uh, this is one, two, and plus a transversality condition. And the transversality condition uh, uh, states that uh, uh, rho minus n will always be uh, positive. That's uh, uh, to make the, the whole system meaningful. Uh, <clears throat> just go ahead and uh, consult your uh, uh, either macro or the dynamic uh, mathematics uh, textbooks. There is also a TVC uh, that we keep uh, uh, as uh, on the side track, uh, but we are not going to make use of it. Now, this derivative, very easy. Derivative with respect to utility function, whatever is, is u prime c. E minus n minus t, this thing, the derivative of c, this is a constant, minus there is a mu and is equal to zero. <coughs> this is a very simple uh, derivative that I take uh, with respect to c. Mu times c minus sine, and uh, the, the first part is quite easy. The derivative with respect to a, a uh, appears with r and with n, and there is also a mu over here. So what it says is that mu times r minus n is equal to minus of mu dot. It is not equal to zero. It is equal to minus of the Hamiltonian multiplier, whatever it is. Lambda, V, mu, h, little h, whatever it is. And I'm using mu for it. Now, uh, uh, let's take this uh, around. Uh, 
this thing will be mu dot over mu is equal to n minus r. I'm just going to uh, change the signs. So this is, let's see, the, this is our second first order condition. The second first order condition, this thing becomes this sort of a uh, relationship. Now, let's play with the first one. Uh, now, until now, we had worked with uh, a utility function, any utility function. In this analysis, a fairly uh, user-friendly, uh, a popular utility function is what we call C constant intertemporal elasticity of substitution utility functions. So for a utility function, we are going to work with a constant substitution elasticity. Substitution of what? Intertemporal elasticity. Here is the idea. The consumer is always confronting whether to consume today versus next year. Today versus next period. That's the, the, the uh, big thing. The subjective discount rate is one factor slowing or uh, accelerating that decision. If the consumer is impatient, he, he or she wants to consume right away. And otherwise, uh, can, it is OK to postpone consumption uh, of the same good in the consumer's mind. And then there is also the ease of doing this, whether uh, Consuming today uh, 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 an apple is as easy in the consumer's mind as consuming it the next period. The same apple, but substituting it over time may depend on the consumer's wealth, how rich or poor it is, uh, on which point of the uh, income ladder uh, uh, the, the character is. Typically, if you are really uh, rich and well-to-do, making these substitution decisions are easier. If you are uh, coming from a, a poor background, you will immediately uh, be uh, impatiently consuming. So over time, as income level changes, this elasticity of substituting something between today and tomorrow will also change. It will, be, it will have the wealth effects. This type of utility functions assumes this effect away and argues that over time, the elasticity of substitution, irrespective of your income, stays the stays same. It's a, a parameter. Uh, and uh, one popular brand is this type of a utility function, uh, which you might have seen this in your uh, fiscal economics uh, 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 courses, uh, maybe not if trade. The theta is called the marginal utility uh, uh, parameter. And the uh, inverse of this is called, uh, I'm going to write this formally, it is the intertemporal elasticity of substitution parameter. But let's work, uh, work, first of all work on the mathematics of this. So from now on, just like Cobb-Douglas is our most popular production function, this type of utility function will be our most popular consumption function. Biraz heyecanlandırayım. Sol of the utility fonksiyonumuz nasıldı? That's part of the consumption fonksiyonumuz. Under sol of. But, uh, no, that was the an equilibrium relationship. Consumption function. Great. All right. That was our consumption function. Uh, consumption function was 
1 minus S times output. S was constant, so I didn't have to worry about whether <coughs> things are intertemporally substitutable or that's what the consumer was doing all the time. Give me the level of income and a saving parameter. The residual is your consumption. So solo model worked with a linear consumption function. Now we have a consumption function that is changing over time, over which we are trying to intertemporally optimize. That is the plan. This is Solow's consumption function, linear, very simple. And this is our utility function that will give us a consumption function. Now, if this is think, I will do this only once. Uh, the derivative of Stink is simply 1 minus theta times c to the power minus theta, right? One drops out. This minus one drops out as well. And there is a numerator, 1 minus theta. And as you see, this becomes a very user-friendly thing. Uh, the derivative is simply c to the power minus theta. So I'm going to take c minus c to the power minus theta and place it here to u prime. That's the derivative of the utility function. This theta minus of it, minus theta, is called marginal utility of consumption. It's the uh, marginal utility that the, the guy is obtaining over consumption. And observe that theta is theta. It's a parameter. 0 0.2, 2, 3, the number pi, whatever it is. But it's a parameter. So marginal utility of consumption is constant. The inverse of this that I'm going to treat with a, a sigma in absolute value, inverse of this, this is called the elasticity of substitution. Substitute. It's haunting me. Subs t to t on. All right. <laughs> what are you substituting over? I am substituting over today versus tomorrow, an intertemporal elasticity of substitution. Since theta is constant, this gentleman is also constant. Uh, in my book as an appendix and also in uh, <coughs> Barrow and Salai Martin's uh, uh, Theory of Growth book, the 1995 book, there is a discussion of these variables. But for the time being, this is how we define variables. The theta minus theta is marginal utility of uh, uh, consumption. And the inverse of this is what we refer to as the intertemporal elasticity of substitution. And uh, whose derivative is c to the power minus theta. All right, now let, let's solve that, uh, complete this. Uh, uh, let me use the other one. I, I want you to see these. Uh, This thing, this is my first equation. So my first equation becomes, rather than u prime c, I'm going to use c to the power minus theta for my new class of utility functions that I shall be working almost, except for uh, uh, really uh, uh, bizarre utility function uh, uh, models. Almost all classic endogenous growth models use the, uh, the CAES uh, function. U prime e to the power rho minus n times t, and this is equal to mu. And my second equation is mu dot over mu is equal to n minus r. Now, uh, I am going to convert the first equation into a mu dot over mu framework. 
so that I can equate the two and solve the thing. And uh, what we shall do is, first of all, we are going to take a d log t of the first equation. That is the log differential of the equation. Log differential is a simultaneous action of taking logarithm and also time derivative simultaneously, which is easy to do, but uh, I, I always do mistakes and I, uh, I'm not good at, at multitasking things. So by cheating, this is pure cheating, okay? Uh, since this is not a mathematics course, uh, uh, just for the sake of doing something uh, uh, cleaner. First, I am going to take logs, and second, I am going to take derivatives with respect to t. Ideally, you do it once simultaneously, and I always uh, mess it up. Uh, uh, uh. So my suggestion is, uh, Banned the mathematics rules. Uh, uh, <coughs> forget about uh, what your mathematician uh, roommate or says. This is a crime. What you are saying, but this is a, a crime in innocence, right? So uh, I'm going to take first the logarithm of this thing, and then take a derivative with respect to t. And if you are uh, uh, ex once, once you become experts. Then you say that, uh, well, uh, I'm taking d log t, the time derivative of logarithm, uh, the log differential uh, uh, exercise. All right. Can you help me taking the logarithm of this thing? Minus theta. Right? So the logarithm of the first equation, that is, minus theta, uh, actually it should be ln, but uh, let me at least do it right. Uh, it's not uh, an arbitrary logarithm. It is ln c minus rho minus n t ln e is equal to logarithm of natural logarithm of mu. L and E, of course, the natural uh, logarithm, uh, E is 1. And now I'm taking a derivative of uh, logarithm of C with respect to T. That is derivative of L and C with respect to time. And uh, what I do have is C dot divided by c. And likewise, the derivative of mu with respect to time is actually, again, mu dot over mu. The logarithm rule. Derivative, what kind of a derivative? Time derivative. That is the change in time. And the, the way I do it in my notation is c dot. c dot means change in consumption over time. This is change in consumption over time, dc dt. <coughs> and in my notation, it is our c with a dot above changing uh, consumption over time. And the uh, logarithm rule on the derivative moves uh, the, uh, the variable uh, in the denominator as well. So this is my note here. What do I have? I have a minus theta c dot over c minus rho minus n with respect to t, t drops out, and is equal to mu dot over mu. This is the log differential of the first equation. Let me write this uh, once again openly. So 
So the first equation became c that over c, uh, there is a uh, minus theta in front, minus rho minus m is equal to mu dot over mu. And the second equation was uh, already <coughs> n minus r is equal to mu dot over mu. Starting from the Hamiltonian setup, I have used the Hamiltonian derivative with respect to c equals 0, Hamiltonian derivative with respect to cold state variable assets equal to minus mu dot, and uh, did a couple of cheating and exercises, and I have now two equations, both equals to mu dot over mu uh, variables. So I have a theta c dot over c plus rho minus n is equal to uh, r minus n. I got rid of these minus signs. Now you see, from the consumer side, since we are always working on per capita variables, the population growth rate simply disappears. But I kept it until now as it is to show that it's actually a redundant variable that I keep track of in terms of true accounting, but uh, it doesn't have a role to play in an exogenous neoclassical model where per capita incomes are followed out. But in terms of accounting, the size of the household, the number of assets, the number of uh, inherited variables, so on and so forth, have to be kept track of, but at the end of the day, ends cancel out. Population cannot play a role on per capita things. It's, it's an oxymoron thing. Yeah. So what we have now is this solution. C that over C is equal to R minus rho. This is it. Interest. interest rate, R. R is interest rate. Return on assets. Rho is subjective discount rate. I mean, uh, yes, no. Uh, what? Uh, the, uh, this is a crucial question, though. Uh, it's an early question, but uh, it's an important question. What is R in this economy? How is R defined? Tamam, uh, ama mathematically. Uh, there is a producer hiring capital and labor. Wage rate is equal to something. R is equal to something. Since we are a neoclassical model, at the background, there is an output being produced by a neoclassical production function. And this production function distributes uh, income to wage earners according to some rule and uh, capital owners are according to some other rule. What was the rule? Hani bir quiz yaptınız geçen hafta? Tamam anlıyorum. Bana cebirsel olarak bunu söyleyin. Bravo, bravo. F prime K minus delta. Wage rate bu biraz daha zor. Fk, ya iktisat çıkıyor için. Output, what is output? F of k minus capital times profit rate minus capital times F prime. F prime is profit rate times capital. This is profits, total profits. This is output. Output minus profits is equal to wages. Wages plus profits is equal to output. Profits 
the derivative of the production function that we call marginal product of capital. And since I have a, a delta, just for the fun of it, I am always distinguishing between gross versus net. So the net profit rate is F prime minus delta. So is R greater than or equal to rho? Or how does it change over time? When? Is it always greater? F prime is diminishing over time. So whatever R is, R is always falling over time. Rho is constant, but R is not. Why does R change? Because I am working with a neoclassical production function where this thing has diminishing returns to capital per labor. Okay. Uh, a consumer, uh, an individual only consumes only uh, when the returns are... Uh, Great. All right. Then the returns on assets is greater than the impatience factor. This says that no, uh, I mean, it's like the little devil, devil in your, high, uh, in your uh, just uh, consume, just forget it. Forget there is no tomorrow. There is only today. Enjoy it. Uh, enjoy it while you can. That's, that is the, uh, the devil's uh, 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 nagging on you. Just consume, consume, consume uh, right away, immediately. And this is the market rationality. If R is greater than assets, uh, sorry, Return on assets is greater than your immediate consumption motive. What do you do? You wait. Meaning, you do not consume. What do you do with not consuming? Save. We save in assets if market rate of return is high than your impatience factor then you will tend to save. Save in assets. Meaning that if this is true, then uh, C dot over C will be positive, according to this rule. That is, rate of consumption, C dot over C, rate of consumption is positive, that is, is increasing, right? If R is greater than rho, that is, if market rate of return exceeds uh, subject to discount factor, but let me just call it in plain English, Patience factor, right? Exceeds your patience factor or patience parameter. In technical language, if market rate of return is greater than the subjective time preference, that is, the market is offering you higher yields, then rate of consumption is increasing. What does it mean, rate of consumption? I am consuming one apple today, and it is increasing over time. That means next year, I will be consuming two apples. And from today to tomorrow, I must have saved so that I can consume more in the future. There is no other way around. There is no uh, uh, technical change or uh, uh, anything that will give me two apples next year. Today, I am going to save, and I am going to consume more tomorrow. So this thing being positive means today, right now, I am saving. Tomorrow, it will be greater. It is increasing. I will be able to consume more in the future. That's what C dot over C positive means. So in 
every time, whenever there is a complicated uh, equation, it actually tells something very simple and sensible thing in economics life. If the market rate of, forget about this, this uh, intertemporal elastic thing for the moment. If the market interest rate is high today, we will save today and consume more in the future. Our consumption will be increasing. If conditions change, interest rate falls. And if it falls less than my impatience factor, I will be impatient today and see that over C will be negative. I will be consuming to, uh, uh, today. Uh, and I will be consuming even less tomorrow. <coughs> Can you be patient for 15 more minutes? Uh, and uh, without giving a break, let's just uh, wrap the thing here. Uh, there is one uh, now uh, thing that I have uh, said, forget it for the moment, and this is this 1 over theta. And 1 over theta is my elasticity of substitution. So if, if theta is a high number, I don't know how high it is. It's, uh, 0 0.5 could be high, or 5,000 could be high. I don't know uh, your preference. If theta is, or rather than increasing, let's say, is high, then elasticity of substitution inverse of it is low. So here, if this is high, then C that over C will change only little. So if theta is high, C that over C will be changing very little in response to r minus rho differences. The higher theta, this thing will move less irrespective of what is happening here. And that means it is very hard to substitute today and tomorrow. Therefore, the consumer is less willing to change its consumption. If theta is high, elasticity of substitution is low. Therefore, it is hard to substitute in the consumer's mind between today and tomorrow. That's irrespective of what the market is telling you. That's how this economy operates. OK, any questions on the consumption side? I will only uh, work on what I erased today and just to complete uh, how this uh, economy uh, operates from the producer side. Something that you know, here is our economy in a plain, uh, plain fine arts, right? Uh, this is our dynasty. This is our character here, representative agent. There are millions of it, but I choose, just choose one of them. The guy <coughs> maximizes agility function subject to A dot is equal to W plus RA minus NA minus C. That's what our agent is doing. And at the end of the day, we said that the solution of our guy's problem is a consumption plan. It is not a linear function or anything. It's a consumption plan which says that 1 over theta r minus rho. This is our 
agent's problem. Maximize a utility function subject to an income constraint, a dot, w dot, 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 and whose solution turned out to be a consumption plan, a profile. It is not one period consumption. I am saying that in 2018, I'm going to consume this much in 2019, 2020, 2021. That's the rate of increase of consumption over time. At the other side, anything, any remark on this? Anything unclear? Bir hafta içinde bu ödemi yapabilirsiniz değil mi? Size dağıttım. Bravo. Tamam şimdi. This is my factory. There is a manager here. And the manager hires this guy as labor. And hires capital as savings of that guy. Factory. The manager pays wage rate that we have just reminded you. Uh, output here is produced by a neoclassical F. Cobb Douglas in your homework. Uh, Gökberk will do other uh, uh, type of production functions tomorrow. <coughs> wage rate is this thing and Profit rate is F prime minus delta. F in your homework is a Cobb Douglas one. The manager is paying wages over here, which is equal to this uh, bill, and pays interest on assets. as interest income to the household. During the day, the guy goes in and works here with capital, the size of the factory. And each year, this capital perhaps expands. Okay, T plus one, T plus two, T plus three. Uh, Factory uh, keeps big, uh, 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 expanding. That is, you add more capital. And how do you add more capital? Güzel. Great. You save in what? Assets. What's an asset? Asset. Evet. Asset bu. Çok güzel. The household invests in assets. And these assets coupons, T-bonds, whatever, <coughs> becomes capital on the producer side. But on the consumption side, it's pieces of paper called assets. In this model, there is only one output. Wheat, corn, hububat, uh, mısır, whatever. But in real life, uh, you save in assets. A. And these assets, uh, all of a sudden becomes machines, capital. So at the back background of this model, you have to make a heroic neoclassical assumption. What is it? It is assets are assets per labor. It is uh, uh, per labor is equal to or identical as capital per labor. If you have not assumed, if you don't assume this, this A over here cannot become K over here. You have to have an intermediate banking system which will take deposits from Ayşe Teyze and give credit to uh, Sabancı Bey or someone, uh, uh, Joe from uh, uh, a rich country, has to give foreign savings or current account deficit to you, and the IMF should uh, give you uh, land money so that you can borrow someone else's uh, savings. Whatever the mechanism in real life, 
all of it observe is assumed away with implicitly assuming this. Assets in finance is equal to capital in production. So uh, now if I take this equation, let me do it over here. If I take this a dot equation, a dot is equal to w plus r times a minus n a minus c. <coughs> and assume big. You have to swallow this, right? Uh, that is a is equal to k. Financial assets is equal to physical capital. Machines are created from what households had saved. What did I assume implicitly? I have assumed savings is identical equal to investment. There is no gap between what households do as savings and what producers or entrepreneurs use as capital as investment good. All of a sudden, financial uh, papers became uh, physical machines to, product, produce, uh, to produce. So that's the essence of the neoclassical world. If we assume away any problems in savings and investment equilibrium, there is no uh, cause of crisis or uh, nothing of the sort. You cannot explain 2008 crisis with this model. This, this whole thing is about uh, uh, the uh, subprime mortgage crisis. There is no subprime mortgage. Everything is valuable. <clears throat> or toxic assets, uh, that sort of a thing. Uh, everything is valuable. Whatever consumer has saved is productive capital and vice versa. There are no unproductive assets, speculation, uh, uh, balloons, uh, hyper balloons, uh, whatever. Uh, uh, but if you swallow this assumption that you had done under solo anyway, then uh, let's put W and R into consumer's uh, equation. So W is, or first of all, right, uh, A, A is K. We agreed on this. K dot is equal to W. W is F of K minus K times F prime of K times r, r is f prime of k minus delta times a, which is k, minus n times k minus c. This k and f prime k cancels out. For simplicity, again, uh, for heaven's sake, uh, for heaven's sake, n is 0. Assume away n. So I don't want this thing. Uh, uh, uh. What do we have? k dot is equal to f of k. This thing canceled out, that minus C minus delta K. Do you remember this? Forget this. Uh, first of all, what does it say? It's the change in capital labor ratio. Output minus consumption. What is it equal to? Savings. It is the same thing as S times F of K. Output minus C. But it is Solovian language. I do not have S anymore. Consumption is changing over time. How is it changing? It's changing with respect to differences in R minus rho. 
and minus delta k. So you are, in principle, back to Solovian depiction. Şimdi diyeceksiniz ki hocam iki saatimizi yediniz hayatımızdan. <gülüyor> Trust me, this is more fun. You will enjoy the next three, four weeks more with this setup. But uh, the main principles of a production function, giving wages and uh, profits according to the marginal products, savings investment identity, yani bu, bu sene hayırlısıyla okul bitince, gözünüzü kapatınca neoklasikler, savings and investment identity. Korkarım iş görüşmenizde falan bir yere takılacaksınız ama savings and investment are identical falan gibi şeyler diyeceksiniz. Yani, anyway, so uh, this is the whole neoclassical setup. The main building blocks are always the same. But we are now making it more general where rather than having a constant saving rate in spite of falling rate of return, we change the consumption behavior according to the differences between R and Rho. <coughs> finally, so we are back to Solov, but finally, if you bring consumers and producers together, the rate of growth of the economy in equilibrium will be determined by the change in consumption. That is what I will call G, the rate of growth of the economy, will be equal to 1 over theta R. What is R? R is this thing. So instead of R, I am going to substitute what it is in consumer's problem as well. So it will become F prime of K minus delta, minus rho. And this will be the growth rate of this economy. Since F prime is falling over time, theta is constant, delta is constant, rho is constant, everything is as constant, and over time, F is falling over time. That means growth rate is falling over time. And uh, as f prime k is diminishing, g is decreasing, and under the steady state, it again goes to zero. So, Steady state rate of growth is zero because we have diminishing returns to capital. Now, uh, tomorrow, Gökberg will do the same uh, algebra once again, but where f prime will be non diminishing. And as I said, the whole endogenous growth literature starts with a Hamiltonian, a utility function, uh, in perhaps different notation, all of these, but add something that compensates the loss in F prime. You have to add here something that will contract F prime tendency to fall. It will make it flat and that something will be the source of endogenous growth. It could be brutal A. There is no diminishing returns, AK model. Or it could be technology, human capital, ideas, ideas R&D, conglomeration effects, uh, a sensible government, a strategic public capital, uh, institutions, better institutions, Daran Acemoğlu uh, bilin ne yaptı uh, style, uh, uh, learning by doing, learning by learning, uh, whatever. Okay, uh, you have to hire a uh, uh, good Oxford British uh, speaker, 
mathematically, you explain, but uh, uh, you will have to fill this with uh, uh, whatever that Shay is. 